three big points and it's a victory that puts Manchester City now top of the Premier League. Level on Arsenal ahead on goal difference. Arsenal though do have a game in hand. So much to digest from this game. Joining us, Frank Leboeuf. Nader Manua. Oh, what a rubbish 24 hours it's been for Julian Laurent. Uh, more from Jules uh, a little later on. Uh, Craig, let's focus so on the, this match. There was a fear it could be kind of an anti-climax. It wasn't. It's a lot of fun. It's intense. You couldn't really take your eyes off it. No, Arsenal played well in the first half, to a, to a point. Uh, City overcomplicated it in the first half, again, to a point. You know, Bernardo Silva, one of your best ball players effectively playing left back half the time and, and giving, getting booked and giving fouls away and, and Guardiola recognised it, changed it and City looked better second half, looked more solid. The bottom line here is Arsenal, I didn't see Tommy Asso playing, I have to, not because of the mistake, I didn't see that change happening, that back force played all year. Party was obviously a miss, big miss. City were not brilliant but were supremely clinical yeah. and Arsenal got shabby in the second half particularly Gabriel, particularly that back line. You could just kind of see the wind coming out of their sails as this game went on from Arsenal. I think what happened to Arsenal is that they spent so much energy to, to get back in the game once De Bruyne had scored. And you saw the pressure for Arsenal. I thought that Arsenal reacted very well to that first goal and actually got pressure around the ball and got a lot of numbers involved to try and win the ball back and win momentum back. They get the goal to 1-1 and you're thinking, all right, this is a moment in which perhaps Arsenal are able to maintain and withstand this sort of level of play. But the work that they did to get back into 1-1 almost took the legs out of Arsenal. And so now, as the game went on, they couldn't quite pressure the same way that they were able to do in the first half. They couldn't quite create the turnovers. It was Manchester City who was having the possession, and it was Manchester City that was pressing higher up the field and forcing turnovers themselves. From then on, Manchester City, the big difference in this game was how good they were in the attack in 18-yard box as compared to Arsenal. Arsenal had their chances. Yeah. When Manchester City had their opportunities, it was goal, goal, goal. When Arsenal did, near misses by Enketia. Ah, who, maybe, so close. Not quite what you need at this level. You're a happy man, Nadam. No, I don't know what you mean, Dan. It's just a regular, <laughs> oh, regular Wednesday. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it too much. No. It was, it was obviously a very significant game for Man City and those who do support them. Because I think going down there today, Arsenal have been very, very good this season. And if they would have put on a strong performance or sort of continued the performance that it did in the first half and got the win, that would have felt like a really big statement. Yet instead, you know, they're going to be questions asked about that Arsenal side now, even though they've still got a game in hand to get themselves back to the top of the league. I think for City, the second half in particular is one of the best I think I've seen from this season. And that maybe in some ways that's an indictment on how they've been overall. But it felt like a big occasion version of what Man City are. I think they forced a lot of errors from Arsenal in that second half. And to put it into context, I think it, Arsenal didn't get a shot in that second half until maybe the 85th minute. And that's them at home trying to push to try and find something from the game itself. But I thought City did press really well. And when it came down to it, they were clinical, as Ali said. And it felt like a huge result. It's very rare to see Man City celebrating the way that they did at the end of the game. And even though they know the game, the season isn't over they did know the importance of leaving a marker down on this Arsenal side because to this point, you know, they've been having their own separate battles. But today, it's, uh, it's a good day to be blue, I guess. Yeah, the frustrating thing from an Arsenal perspective, we heard Arteta talking about it afterwards, Frank, that every single one of the goals that City scored, you can pinpoint an <clears throat> Arsenal mistake in it. Well, it's what we call experience. And with experience come the luck. And that's, uh, that's what happened in football. And that's what happened for... For, for Manchester City, the first goal from, uh, from uh, um, De Bruyne came from a, a mistake. The second one also from Gabriel. Uh, and only the third one uh, came from a, a real action from, uh, from Manchester City. But you have to count on the experience. And that, that's the differences between the two teams. You felt that at some point, as you said, you know, Manchester City was getting better and better. And because of the experience, you know, got the luck on top of it. And... Uh, and it's a lesson also for, well, if I can give a lesson, I don't know, for, for Mr. Guardiola. Because uh, Pep didn't play against Tottenham with De Bruyne and Gundogan and didn't win. And those two players weren't fantastic today. But on the three goals that, they, uh, that, that Manchester scored, they were, the, 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 the three they were involved in. You know, De Bruyne in the first one, Gundogan mm -hmm. the assist in the second one, and two of them in the third one. And you cannot play even if they're not fantastic, with, without those two players, because they simply make the difference. Jules, looking at it as Arsenal will reflect on this, those mistakes apart, 
where will they feel that they let themselves down? Well, it's hard to, to look beyond the mistakes, of course, in a game like this, especially when you play well in the first half. If you give away goals like that against a team like City, it's, it's unforgivable and usually you don't come back from it. I think they did well to come back from 1-0 down at 1-1. And then that, that, that second goal, really, and I think the, the changes that, that the, the, the one change that Pep makes, because he got it wrong, really, I don't mm -hmm. think that back three to start with for City was a good idea. And, and as soon as there was the change in the second half, then they played much better and they were, they were dominant and it was very difficult at some point in the second half for Arsenal to even get out of their, of their own half and their own 30 yards, really. So, but, but if you, if you look, try to look beyond the, the mistakes, which, by the way, we saw mistakes from Ramsdale at Everton. There were one on the Brentford goal that should have been slapped. But again, I, I think Ramsdale was a bit short on that, on that Tony goal. So this is not the first time they make those kind of mistakes. And yeah, they're a young team, of course. But you should also learn from the mistakes that you made previously in the season. If you don't learn from them, I think there's a, there's a, mis there's a, there's a problem somewhere. But apart from that, there's also positives there. But you, you saw the, the, the depth in the squads with no party, for example, available and Jorginho had to start. You basically have Trossard and that's it. Uh, on the other hand, City can make changes, can change the formation, can bring on players like Phil Foden, for example, and, and you feel that again. And again, you can't compare a young team like Arsenal who's been together 18 months and the machine that City are after winning four of the last five Premier League titles. Look, they're still a good side, but, but it's a slump. Yeah, it's what, one point in nine? It's a slump. And, and key players still not playing well. You, you said to Jules, what, what was the difference or you know, what, what was the problem for Arsenal? I, I tell you, one of the main ones at both ends of the field was decision-making. Mm. Think about the Zinchenko pass as well in the edge of his box that Bernardo Silva got onto and he, if he played a better ball, Haaland had a, pretty much a, a, a tap-in. So decision-making at the back, decision-making from the manager to an extent with the team selection, a again... It's Monday, mo Monday morning quarterback, but I think Ben White hooks that into the stand, probably. Right. You know, he's just in centre-half playing it right back. But also decision-making in the final third against this City side. Eddie Nketiah, he's been great. Ali mentioned the two headers that he had. There was the ball Jorginho put him through in the first half, and he should see Martinelli. And he squares it, Martinelli has got a one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't see it, he goes for the shot, it gets blocked. Shaka going through in the second half. I mean, there's two or three occasions, but Shaka going through. He's got Trossard on his left. He dallies, he dallies, he dallies, and then Diaz gets a, an easy challenge. And when, it, when they had a two on one, you can't allow. City didn't have all that. City had those chances they had and went bang. Yeah. So the difference is decision making in key areas of the field and City's experience made better decisions today. Uh, we saw Kevin De Bruyne. How good was that finish, by the way, from Kevin De Bruyne? <laughs> um, not easy. You're right. Oh, seriously, not easy. Not easy. And he hasn't had a great season, has he? No. <laughs> but And wasn't having a great game. No, and Pep's gone back to experience. And I mean that experience, all the players have experienced. But he's gone back to big hitters in the last couple of games. I, I just, like Jules, I just didn't like the way they were set up in the first half. And that back line. I mean, Bernardo Silva yeah. continually going yeah. back there. Who the could back have sent off for it, for all the challenges. Could have done. Uh, and he is one of your... When he goes in the middle of the park, you get that extra body and he's great on the ball. So... City got it right in the end, yeah. but Arsenal, the questions are going to come thick and fast. Uh, Naden, Erling Haaland, always a point of debate, always a point of discussion. How would you rate his performance today? <laughs> well, he scored the third goal, so, you know, I guess he did pretty well. Um, it's, it's one of those weird ones, like, I think at times with players like him, they can go throughout the game and not feel like they're having the biggest sort of impact. But you'd just be more than happy to have him just out there in general. And then, lo and behold, as soon as Kevin De Bruyne gets played in, who's the ball? That, who does it fall to? It's him. I thought it was a great first touch and a, such a sharp finish. And it was so quick that Ramsdale didn't even have time to dive. So, ultimately, you know, he's, he's not had the best of games, but he's done exactly what the club needed him to do. He's held the line whenever he could. He's taken the ball to the field whenever he could. And he stepped up in the biggest moment and scored the game, which basically killed, scored the goal, which basically killed the game. So, it was far from perfect, but it was more than enough today, I'd say. I'm, I'm going to disagree Dan. with Natum in that I think Erling Haaland was actually excellent today. Right. Because the game called for something different today. It called for him to be banging in between the two center backs to fight for the long ball to be played to him and for, he, for him to be able to, to fight enough to hold on to it to then allow Manchester City to come out. If 
Arsenal is going to pressure. You need to find that outlet. And he was always willing to, at the very least, make it difficult for the center backs. So by the end of the game, you see Gabriel on the ground complaining about a contact with Erling Haaland. You see center backs that are uncomfortable with him, and he's able to always create that. If you keep feeding him the ball, he's going to fight for you. He's going to be more effective for you, and he's going to be more motivated to make those runs. You continue to feed him, this guy's going to be more effective, more efficient for you as a player. I thought it was a great bathroom ram yeah, for, for right. and, I, and, I, and I think in the end he was in the head of the two centre yep. halves, and, and we talked about it yesterday. You know, he's not he's not really here to batter Southampton, is he? In teams like that, it's yeah. these big games, and he stepped up again. But you think about the you know some food for thought for the Arsenal centre halves. The last two games, they've played two big, powerful front lines. Brentford was and Boomer, but more so Ivan Tony, and they struggled defensively. Today was Erling Haaland, and at times they struggled with that, that power and that physicality. Mm -hmm. So that's some food for thought for Saliba and Gabriel. Gabriel, by the way, who got lucky on the uh, Haaland yeah, offside nice. as well, because yeah. he got completely out muscled. He gets too tight. He'll say, well, I was playing him offside. Cod's wallop, right? <laughs> he, got, he got lucky. He's trying to get wrong side. He's trying to get in a fight. You get in a fight... You've got to be clever as a centre-half. There's no point in getting into a brawl with the Ivan Tonys and Erling Haaland's of this world because they're going to put you off your game. You've got to just take up better positions. They've been great all season, but recently they're getting found out. Go on, Frank. Yeah, I, I, I'm with the guys, you know. I think the more you serve him, you're, the more he's going to be useful. And I think, because I followed the game, you know, sometimes I see on his body language that he gets frustrated. And the day he's going to be really frustrated, he's going to change, you know, something to, the, to, his, um, to his behavior, maybe, to, to the atmosphere as well, because they, they don't use him enough for me. They should, him, should use him a lot more, you know, uh, maybe for, for him to get the ball. But they go around him still, like the Manchester City knows to, how to do. They don't use him enough. And at some point, I think the guy can get upset. So it's a, it's a tight situation for Guardiola. And I think he, he will have to adjust a certain, uh, at some point, you know, the way they're going to use him or ignore him. That's the main concern that I have about Alan. Uh, but that third goal was so good, wasn't it? Like, like to, that, everything happened so quickly. Yeah. But for him, obviously, it happens in a way that he's in complete control of everything. Well, I tell you, once he took that first touch, I thought, oh, in a split second, I thought, that's gone. Mm. And then before you know it, he swiped that big right leg round yeah. and, and battered it in the corner. Fantastic finish. As I say, he was in a similar position when Zinchenko gave the ball away that, that Bernardo Silva should have found him. He got frustrated, actually, with that, and the, and the chance was gone. But City will play around and probably not use him as much as we think because that's the way they play. But as long as he gets his goal or his goals... As a striker, he's going to be happy. It, it, it was surprising that he actually took that first touch. I thought he was allowing that ball to come across his body to, so that he can hit it with his most comfortable left foot. He takes that first touch in a very tight area, and I'm thinking Gabriel is going to clean him out. But he was so quick to react. And so then you go from, why are you taking the first touch to this, this guy's world-class? World-class touch, gets away from pressure, finishes to the far post. Game said match. Um, I'm asking all three gentlemen away from the studio at the same time. Does anyone still think Arsenal are going to win the title? No, oh, because I made them yeah, shut I up. Think it's a double shut pick. up, Nader. <laughs> Put your hand down. <laughs> Don't give us that oh, rubbish. Yeah. No one's <laughs> believing you for a second. <laughs> but why are you asking me the no, question you know, then, you, Dad? You know Bloody what? hell. Well, well, because I know you're talking nonsense, really. <laughs> mm, maybe, maybe not. Go on, Frank. No, I, I, I really think, I really think that the, uh, the chance of Arsenal is gone since they lost against Everton because of what's going on in the midfield, in the midfield area where party every time he doesn't play, they, they're not balanced. And on top of it, we don't have the Shaka that we used to have uh, and we had this season and Odegaard as well. The, uh, the, the implication, the involvement of those players right now is not at the same level that it used to be. And when you lose the battle of the, of the, uh, in the middle of the park, you lose the game. And it's what is going on right now. They're not as good as they were. It's why maybe they're not as performant as they, as they were. Next up for Arsenal, Jules, away against Aston Villa. This is a big, big game now, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's massive against Unai Emery as well, uh, by oh, the yeah. way. And I think this is where you see or not the reaction because we said one, one point out of, the, the nine, of, of nine the last three games. You lost Everton because you were not, you didn't respond to how aggressive they were. You were not in the game at all. You drew the game against Brentford where, OK, the goal, their goal should have been slapped. But before that, they were better than you anyway. So the, the draw was a fair result. And then today, you play well the first half, we say, but you, you give goals away. And in the end, you don't deserve anything really from the game. So that's the reaction that you have to have on Saturday now. And yeah, they lack a bit of sharpness. I think that some of them are tired because they've played so much. There's no rotation really in that team at all, certainly in the league. Because again, we said the depth in the squad is not as important as a, as a City squad, for example. So they will have to go and grind out results now as well, which is something that they didn't really have to do in the first half of the season. So this is something that they have to do now. And we will have to see. And, and maybe that Villa game is almost as important as the one tonight. Not as mm. important, but almost, because this is the reaction that they need now. And if they don't get the reaction on Saturday, yeah, then I think, yeah, it, it probably will be gone. But if they get a reaction, then it's still in their own hands. And I think they can still go and win it, of course. They've got a good run. Villa, Leicester, Everton, Bournemouth, Fulham, Palace, Leeds. Yeah. You know, you couldn't really ask for a better run of form, of run of fixtures to try and get your form back. Look, it's no point. It's not throwing the towel in time. Sure. You're in that dressing room. You're in a title race. You've still got to play City, OK, away. Uh, you've hit the buffers a little bit. But this was never going to be the invincible side. It was never, never going to happen. They're just, they're just not good enough and not experienced enough to do that. So this period was always going to come. It was just a matter of when was it going to come. Right. So I suppose in some sense, if they can put it behind them now and crack on, that's much better than it happened late in April, you know, right at, towards the death or whatever, as the season's going to go a little bit longer this year, a little bit later. But I, I agree with Jules. This weekend is a pivotal moment. Yeah. You roll your sleeves up, you pick yourself up and you put a marker down against a Villa side that you can get at and you say, we're not going to go away. But if they go, if it's a bad result for them, I'm afraid, they're going, I think it'll be difficult to pick themselves up in that, that game. Obviously, Jules pick, picked it up. The point that the depth in squad between mm. the two teams is, is so different. Yes, it is. And, and Mikel Arteta was asked about his team and the sense of belief. And he says, I believe even more now than I did before. Well, of course you're going to say that. Yeah. But he knows that he's short. He knows that when it comes to making changes, he doesn't quite have the same options that obviously Manchester City has. But more to the point, Craig mentioned experience, Frank mentioned experience. I'll go ahead and mention experience again. And the reason I say that is because this is the first time in the season, really, that you're going to start hearing noise around Arsenal, that is not positive. Yeah. That is not patting you in the back. That Eddie Enquete, you have been so good. That Martin Godegar, you have been so good. No, no. Now there's going to be a criticism that wasn't there before and a noise of doubt that wasn't there before. This is when I think experience is important, that you're able to put that to the side, <clears throat> that somehow you're able to ignore that, that everybody that was telling you you were so great, now not so much. That message is changing. Can you stop it with performances on the field? If they answer that question against Aston Villa this weekend, maybe they get this momentum back. If they don't, it's over. I think, in some sense, the, small, the smaller, tight-knit squad has actually been the mechanism that's made them as good as they've been sure. because of the continuity and the players that have been in form. But it's also, in some sense, going to be their Achilles heel if players are starting to get tired or fatigued or underperforming to the standards that they've set in the first four or five months of the season, then that's where the difficulty comes in. I, I really like the continuity in team selection. I think it's been great for them to play that way. But then you've got to look at the batteries. Yeah. Can they go a whole season with, say, 15 players that they're selecting from? And at the moment, the answer is looking like probably not. I think... Craig, what you just said there about the lack of legs for this team, for a team that likes to pressure, it is what they do, right? This is the way they want to play. They want to go pressure higher up the field. They want to create 1v1 situations and duels. If you're going to do that, you need to have freshness. You need to have depth in order to get those numbers around the ball. Today, we saw when they got tired, Manchester City were able to knock the ball around. They struggled. If this continues to happen, it will be a problem for Arsenal. I'm going to humor him. I'm going to do it. Okay. Nathan, why are Arsenal going to win the league then? Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Um, I think because if this is going to be their bad spell, 
I think there's still time for them to be able to address that. And from the Man City standpoint, they've obviously shown something pretty good today, but I don't think they've done anything so far over the season. It almost makes us, they almost guarantees they'll go on the runs that they have done in the years gone by, where they're winning five to ten games back to back. I think it's, they are capable, but it just doesn't feel as likely. Whereas I think for Arsenal, if their bad spell is now as opposed to towards the end of the season, then they're definitely in with a chance. I mean, they're, top, they're joint top of the table now with a game in hand. They could be back to top but within the next 10 days or however long it is. And then when they go and play City at the Etihad, again, as Jules mentioned, you know, people say it's just in City's hands. It's also in Arsenal's. They have that potential for three points and a win at the Etihad will make that whatever it needs to be in that moment. So I still have a belief in them because they showed something today, which I think lots of teams in the Premier, Premier League will struggle to play against. But in this particular instance, playing against the Man City side, who feel like they've been there and done that and managed all these big games because it's, for City, it feels like it's five, six enormous games every season. So I think they did that today. But I think for Arsenal, I think it starts on the weekend against Villa. They get a result. And then before you know it, they can be in a calm dressing room because things could be looking up again. They're in a great position. Mm. I mean, it hasn't gone from... Yeah, they're all tired. You haven't got any players anymore. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> they can't score. We're all tired when it gets to, like, the crunch point of the season. I'm You're tired now. 24 <laughs> minutes into the show. <laughs> 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 all of was 50. But you know, they're in a great position. I, you know, if I saw a player, if, if I saw a player, a teammate of mine coming in with a chin on the floor, you know, 24 hours later, 48 hours later, I would be harming them. Right. There's not a time to feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. You got these things happen, right? Bad results happen. Mistakes from Tommy Asu happen. Mistakes from Gabriel. They happen. It's how you pick yourself up. And I think from Arsenal's perspective, they've got to get their backsides back in there, smile on their face, get sharpness again, get training again, and start going and getting some results. They're a better team than almost all the other ones around them. There's no reason they shouldn't be getting results. But if they start going into training and they're starting to feel sorry for themselves, one or two, that's going to be a problem. I don't know where this glass half full guy came no, from, but it, yeah. welcome. <laughs> it is yeah. beautiful well, because, to, because, to because, have you, know, you here. Listen, I, when, in my time at Celtic, they were writing us off. You know, at one point, they were writing Rangers off. Then they were writing us off. Then the press were on their back. Yep. You've got to go in the dressing room and you've got to get everybody gelled together yep. and kick on. That's why you got Player of the Year. Well, there Just you go. Show yeah. you a little, I mean, that positive energy, <laughs> optimism. Uh, we'll, uh, we, we'll finish the segment by saying congratulations to Frank, who got the prediction right for this game. He wanted to make sure that we mentioned Why that. Did you <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I like the, 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 the fact you did. But do you know what the main question is? Do, oh. Is it one of us believing what Nadam said was truthful or he was just being diplomatic? Uh, we very much know that it was the latter. <laughs> very much the latter in there. Oh, thank course. you very much, Frank. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.